Erwin, I remember a story that you told that I think is apropos right here. I'm still concerned about the guy that's laying on his bed right now, and he's, he knows he's going to die. I'm also concerned about those that are afraid they may die. They don't know if they have it or they, they're wondering, okay? But they got the fear in their life. Or they're just people that are sitting at home thinking about all this thing circulating around the world and inevitably they think they're going to get it. They're not prepared to meet God. And they've done certain things in their life that are bad things. And they don't think if God sees those, they would really be ashamed and God would never let them come into heaven, okay? Because God is perfect. They know God is holiness, and that scares them. They haven't followed the Old Testament laws or the New Testament laws. They're sinners. The Bible says, for all have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God, okay? And the wages of sin is what? Death. They think, that's where I'm going. Give them some hope by using the illustration of the man who had files of his life, let's say, we're just making this up here as we go along, he had files of his life in a private room, and every file was one of the deeds he had done through his life. Okay, so this man goes into this private room, and he has this file cabinet in his mind. This was part of a dream, and he goes through all the different files, and each file has a different sin that he committed. You know, whether or not it has to do with the music he listened to or the moral code that he violated, his immorality, drugs, all of that was in these files. And he goes through it and he wants to keep it private because he is so ashamed. And then in the dream, Jesus comes to him and he says, Oh, not Jesus. If there's anybody I don't want to see at this point, it's Jesus. Right. But Jesus begins to go through the files one by one. And then what he does is he signs each one with his own blood. And he goes through the file cabinet, one drawer after another, after another. And the man is just standing there and saying, I can't believe Jesus is seeing all of my hidden sins. And then Jesus is finished and he comes over and he puts his arm around the man and says, it is finished. And those are the words of Jesus on the cross. And that's why you and I can say today to the person who's dying, whom you have identified, or the person who is alive, absolutely overcome with guilt, not knowing where to turn, you and I today can point them to a Savior who can actually save them from their sins. And what we need to do, it's so important for people to realize this, is that there is more grace in God's heart than there is sin in their past. And the reason for that is because of the wonder of the death of Jesus Christ and then his resurrection and his ascension done for sinners who will simply give up the fiction that they are perfect and they will indeed take time to believe in a Savior who can save them. And he takes responsibility in effect saying, I've paid for all your sins. It is finished. And nobody has to do anything once Jesus says, I'm the one that's forgiving you. I paid for all of your sins. There's nothing that we can do that we can add to Jesus. When he was on the cross, he did everything that is necessary for us to be forgiven and presented to his Father, holy, blameless, okay?